in this video lecture series in continuation with the previous one we are going to learn about clinical overview and clinical summary as mentioned in section 2.5 and 2.7 of module 2 and it comes under the m4 efficacy guideline r2 let's begin with clinical overview so what is the main aim for writing clinical overview so it is intended to provide what a critical analysis critical analysis of our clinical data in ctd document so it has this comprehensive clinical summary and the individual clinical study reports and other relevant reports but it should critical analysis of the clinical data and secondly the clinical overview provides the comprehensive clinical summary and individual clinical study reports and whatever other relevant reports would be are all included in this section but it should primarily present the conclusions and implications of those data and not re recapitulate them so mainly your report will have the conclusions and the implications of all the clinical study related data now there are some subsections under this before moving to that we will look at what all objectives should be there while writing a clinical overview as per the guideline there are some point mentioned which will be discussing here so it is primarily intended for use by regulatory agency in the review of clinical section of a marketing application and therefore it should be designed accordingly and there should be useful references to overall clinical findings of the regulatory agency uh, for regulatory agency staff involved in review of other sections of the marketing application it should present what the strengths strengths and limitations of the development program and the study results and analyze the benefits analyze the benefits and risk of medicinal products in its intended use and it should be able to describe the study result support the critical parts of the prescribing information so what are the primary objective it should fulfill in order to achieve these objective the uh, clinical overview should describe and explain whatever the overall approach is to the clinical development of your product under question including critical study design decisions it should be uh, it should assess the quality of the design and performance of the studies and include a statement regarding gcp compliances that is good clinical practices compliances and it should provide a brief overview of the clinical findings including important limitations like lack of comparisons with an especially relevant active comparator etc and it should provide an evaluation of benefits and risk based upon the conclusion of the relevant clinical studies including interpretation of how the efficacy and safety findings support the proposed dose target indication and an evaluation of how prescribing information and other approaches will optimize benefit and manage risks it should particularly it should particularly address the efficacy or safety issues encountered in the development and how they have been evaluated and restored explore the unresolved issues explain why they should not be considered as barriers to approval and describe plans to resolve them and explain the basis for important or unusual aspects of prescribing information now this is all available on the ICH M4 guideline uh, this is said in so much detail because clinical trials basically shows how well your drug did on the human trials and this is the overview part but it will be discussed in detail in module 5 of the CTD now the clinical overview uh, should not uh, be that much extensive it's the limit said in the guideline is that it should be of 30 pages 
about 30 pages they have said the length however will depend on the complexity of the application okay they have said to use graphs and concise tables in the body of text uh, just to have a better understanding for the reviewer and it is not intended that material present fully elsewhere to be repeated in the cl clinical overview cross referencing it would be more appreciated and encouraged um, especially if it is going to be repeated in clinical summary or in module 5 like that now there is table of contents table of content basically tells us what all content will be there and how this overview is organized so there are sub, sub there are sub subsections of this section so your 2.5.1 would have product development rational product development rational and we'll move on move on to the other serial wise okay in this section as this heading suggests we have to discuss the rational for the development of the medicinal product now rational is you should be able to justify your product development so the discussion of the rational for the development of the medicinal product should identify the pharmacological class of the medicinal product so first they have talked about you must mention the pharmacological class of the medicinal product secondly it should be able to describe the particular clinical or pathophysiological condition that the medicinal product is intended to treat prevent or diagnose so your for example a uh, novel drug is uh, target to uh, target for some cancer for cancer treatment so you need to be able to uh, tell about the particular clinical or pathophysiological condition this is how i am going to justify my product development that oh this is for cancer treatment it is of so or so class it should include a brief overview of the major therapies currently used in the intended population <clears throat> And it should briefly summarize the scientific background that supported the investigation of the medicinal product for the indication that was or was studied. Was there any previous investigation that was conducted for the same medicinal product or any scientific studies? If there is, then you have to provide those investigations as well to form it uh, to form a uh, scientific proof. Then briefly describe the clinical development program of the medicinal product, how you are going to develop and how you are going to uh, con conduct the clinical trials including ongoing and planned clinical studies and the basis for decision to submit the application at this point in the program Bl briefly describe plans for the use of foreign clinical data and then sixth one is last not least uh, um, note and explain concordance or lack of concordance with correct standard research approaches regarding the design conduct and analysis of the studies so if you have any other studies that were already published you can cross reference that literature regulatory guidance and advice at least from the regions where clinical overview is being submitted should be identified so they have mentioned region specific guidelines should also be uh, referenced in this particular point with discussion of how that advice was implemented Formal advice documents, example, official meeting, uh, official guidance letters from regulatory authority should be referenced in section 5 or section of module 5. So this was section subsection 2.5.1. Now sec, sub subsection 2.5.2. Overview of biopharmaceutics. Now, the purpose of this section is to present a critical analysis of any important issues related to bioavailability. So, if there is any, um, this thing, any critical analysis related to the bioavailability of the drug, which might have an effect on efficacy or safety to the to be marketed formulation. Okay, what all they said, safety or yeah, efficacy related ko issue are this root cause bioavailability ho sakta hai, that should be assessed in this section and it should be written in this section for example doses form of strength professionality differences between to be marketed formulation and formulation using clinical trial and influence of food on exposure 
now moving on to the next sub sub section 2.5.3 that is overview of clinical pharmacology the purpose of this section is to present a critical analysis of what pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic and related in vitro data in the ctd the analysis should consider all the relevant data and explain why and how the data support the conclusion drawn so it's not just that you are giving the conclusion but you should also have the relevant data to explain that decision it should emphasize any unusual result and known or potential problems or note the lack thereof and this section should address the pharmacokinetics example ke liye comparative pharmacokinetics in healthy patient in uh, healthy subjects in patients and a special population um what were the effects seen when uh, with uh, intrinsic factors like age sex race uh, renal or Im hepatic impairment and extrinsic factors like smoking uh, drugs concom concomitant drugs and diets rate of absorption distribution including binding with plasma protein specific metabolic pathways including effects of possible genetic issues formation of active or inactive metabolites excretion and all of such issues should be discussed in pharmacodynamics they should discuss about the mechanism of action such as receptor binding onset and offset of action relation of favorable and unfavorable pharmacodynamic effects to dose or plasma concentration pkpd relations and other supported documents for the proposed dose or dosing intervals and any other interaction with medicinal other medicinal products now interpretation of these results and implications of immunogenicity studies clinical microbiological studies or other class specific studies summarized in this section uh, should be summarized in section 2.7 that is in the clinical summary section then comes section 2.5.4 that is overview of efficacy so the purpose of this section is to present again a critical analysis of clinical data related to what the efficacy of the medicinal product in the intended population so we give here a critical analysis related to the efficacy of the medicinal product in a particular population the analysis should consider all relevant data whether positive or negative and should explain why and how the data support the proposed indication and prescribing information these studies deemed relevant for evaluation of efficacy whatever studies were there should be identified and reason that any apparently adequate and well controlled studies are not considered relevant should be provided prematurely terminated studies should be noted and their impact consider so they said that there are certain issues that should arise no no that should arise uh, that would arise and you should consider those is relevant features of the patient population including like there are some disease stage in some people there can be some demographic features observed in some patients so differences between the studied population and the population that would be expected to receive medicinal products after marketing should also be discussed the including like you know the implications of study design like my selection of patient are these i have selected these group of patient uh, duration of study choice of end points what are my control groups all this should also be included and particular attention should be given to end points for which there is limited experience <coughs> there are other points mentioned which can be studied in the guideline itself next moving on to the next sub section that is 2.5.5 that is overview of safety so right now we learn about overview of efficacy here we'll discuss overview of safety and the purpose is to provide a concise and critical analysis of the safety data noting how results support and justify the proposed prescribing manner so the critical analysis of safety should consider adverse effects characteristic of the pharmacological class any adverse effect observed 
and approaches taken to monitor for similar effects should be described. Then special approaches to monitoring of particular adverse events. Example, if there was any uh, ophthalmic uh, or other kinds of events that were observed in a particular trial. If there is any, uh, first they talked about effect and the next they talked about event. If there is any relevant animal toxicology and product quality information, findings that affect or could ha have effect or could affect the evaluation of safety in clinical use should be considered. The nature of patient population and the extent of exposure both to test drug and control treatments, the limitation of safety database like related to inclusion and exclusion of criteria, all these implications should be mentioned in this particular point. Common and non-common, uh, common and non-serious adverse events with reference to tabular presentation of events with the test drug and the control agents in the clinical summary. The discussion should be brief, focusing on events relate of relatively high frequency, those with an incidence higher than placebo. Then in the next point, they said that uh, previously they said common and non-serious one. If there is any serious adverse event, so that should be cross reference from the clinical summary and in this section it should discuss about the ab absolute number and frequency of serious adverse events that took place like there was a death in the clinical trial or uh, events leading to discontinuation or there was a dose modification so all this should be all the results should be uh, discussed and it should be compared with the uh, test subject it should be compared with the control treatment Okay, then similarities and differences in result among studies and their effects upon interpretation of the safety data should be mentioned here. If there is any differences in rates of adverse events in population subgroup, such as those defined by demographic factors like. Okay, so in a particular population group, we, when we considered it that um, these were of different ethnicities or different weights or different genders. And then they showed this particular ethnicity showed adverse event, but not these ones. So that should also be if there is any such differences should be mentioned and relation of adverse events. I increased the dose or the dose regimen was disturbed or the treatment duration was disturbed or elongated or shortened. Based on that, if there was any adverse event it should be mentioned, any long term safety should be mentioned. Uh, methods to prevent, mitigate or manage these adverse events. It should be mentioned and reactions to overdose, the potential for dependence, rebound phenomena and abuse or lack of data on these issues. If there is a worldwide marketing experience, then the extent of that should be discussed and any new or different safety issues were identified or any uh, regulatory actions that would have been taken on the same should also be discussed in this point and support for the applicability to the new region of the data generated in another region where appropriate you can cross reference those in this particular section next is 2.5.6 that is benefits and risks conclusion so in this section uh, we aim to integrate all the conclusions of the all the conclusions of the conclusions reached in the previous sections about biopharmaceutics, clinical pharmacology, efficacy and safety of the medicinal product and to provide an overall appraisal of the benefits and risks to uh, risk of its use in clinical practice. Also implication of any deviations. Okay. Implications of any deviations from regulatory advice or guidelines if there were any and any important limitation to the available data should be discussed in this section. This assessment should address critical aspect of the proposed prescribing information and uh, consider the risk and benefits of the medicinal product as they compare to available alternative treatments or to no treatments in illnesses where there are no treatments may be medically acceptable options right. <clears throat> 